Hello Architects and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and today we're going to go over a couple of fixes. I ran into a couple of small issues on the last uh, video, forgot to cover uh, one thing in particular, um, but we're going to go through those real quick and then I'm going to show you how to set up a victory screen for, um, for your post battle experience and money gains and item gains and all that stuff. So real quick we're just gonna go over the fixes you know if you remember last time I got the battle system working however the skills did not work so we're gonna come into battle commands it was one little teeny tiny small minute detail so if you were following along and you ran into the same issue I apologize but what had happened what had happened was um, the execute command across battle commands and battle subcommands. They're set up fairly similar and so I just copied and pasted from battle commands to battle subcommands. However, however, the thing that I overlooked uh, is that under subcommands execute, I did not change uh, this save value here and the local switch conditions. So what I needed to do was set is enabled as the unique ID source and the target for this switch here and then I needed to set the local switch condition to is enabled so on battle commands it's uh, all all three of these sections are set to is container which which I left it to or I left it as and we needed to switch them to is enabled so that's that's it you know I'm, I'm gonna show you guys at the end of the video that this does work but just trust me bro it works that that was it uh, the other thing that I failed to show you on the last one I set up um, I set up an escape skill and I came in here and I checked is escape however that alone was not enough um, I forgot well, okay, I forgot to set my user scope. So set your user scope on your escape skill to user and allies, or if you wanna have like each individual person run away, I guess you'd set it to user. If you have to have everybody escape separately. Um, I set my success formula to 100 just to show you it will work guaranteed, but you can adjust that. Um, you can put in uh, battle log messages here if you would like I have another message that's gonna pop up I'll show you that in a second um, I created an action sequence uh, for escape specifically and this action sequence all this is doing is it's playing a sound effect so I'll show it to you real quick come over here to action sequences go to my escape action sequence and the only thing in this because I don't have I'm not in a side view battle system or anything you don't see the the uh, party members on screen I just have it play a escape sound effect if you had an animation for your party members running away or attempting to run away you would set that up here you would put in the the uh, graphics or the um, uh, the character animation here so but that's all I did with that uh, let me go back to skills that was the core of it but the main thing the main thing I forgot to do to make escape work is under battle configuration we have an escape script and I didn't set anything up here so just to show you real quick what I did was I just have a, a message display the party fled uh, and then end battle that's in return to prior scene so with uh, really if I just had this you would end the battle this is just for flair that's just for style points okay all right, so those were the two quick things I wanted to show off. I will show you them functioning and working at the end of the video. But first, first, I want to show you how to set up this victory script here, okay? So this is gonna, what's going to play, teaser, this is what's going to play like when you win a, a battle, all right? Um, first thing I did was I set up a victory aftermath user interface. So this will pop up, it'll show your party members, your current party members. Um, I left more room for extra details to pop up later. This one set it to overlay. Set your context active party. 
Um, and I think that's everything here. You can set up a transition if you want. Um, you know, make it more fancy, but that's the basis of it. I also made a little victory message box. This is centered directly underneath these. Um, these this uh, overlay. Uh, this is set to interface type message box. Uh, and then I have the body text, okay? So set that all up. If you're not sure how I did that, be sure to watch the initial uh, user interface tutorial videos. That's what I did there, okay? Come back over to battle configuration. We're gonna go to victory script, and here is where the magic happens. So we have, I'm just, you know, I, I usually try to build these out on uh, the tutorials, but I just wanted to do it ahead of time just to show you. I'll just walk you through it. It's real simple. It's nothing we haven't done before. So um, the first thing you do, or that I did, is I have it displaced uh, a message, a static message. It says enemies defeated. You can get fancier with this, cute with it if you want, whatever. I used the victory message box that I just made, and then I just offset it to be higher uh, on the screen. Actually, I think I want to make it even a little higher than where I left it. Hopefully that works. Um, yeah, it should be fine. Never mind. 750 was too much. I changed it to 600. But uh, yeah, so just have it display the message, enemies defeated. I have it play music. Okay, so um, the thing with this, you know how like in, in your... You know how you have like the victory jingle, like the classic Final Fantasy, da, 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 da. and then you have another section of music that loops through, and you don't get that jingle over and over again. Uh, so what you want to do to achieve that is click on victory music, the little ellipses. Uh, I think I left this checked to looping before. This is my jingle, the beast defeated. This is my da -da 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 my version of it. Um, you have you want to uncheck this, okay? And then play the looping song over here, right? So I set up this how do we do song, and I have this one set to looping. Um, now there are exceptions to this. So if you have if you have the jingle and the loop built into each other, so like say. So say in the file it plays the opening jingle and then it plays the loopable section you could just specify that here and you just ignore everything I'm saying but if you don't have that um, then this is how you do it okay all right enough about that I've been going on about audio for a while weird um, then I have a slight delay I should probably make this a little bit longer than two milliseconds um, just a little buffer delay, just for, for scene timing sakes, I don't think the two milliseconds is doing anything. Okay, but then, what you want to do, this part's kind of important, you want to start saving some values to global variables, okay? So first thing we are saving is a variable, the source is battle summary, you want to save the statistics value by formula name, and so the value you would put in here, um, you would put in the formula name of whatever your experience is called. So if you call it just your standard EXP, you put that here like I have. If you call it XP, you would just put in XP. It's all based upon what you define your uh, d -d -d your statistics formula to be. Where is it? Uh, over here in the statistics. I can't. I can't. <laughs> whatever you define in the statistics tab over here. I'll click it as experience. Whatever you put as formula name, that's what you want here. Okay? It can be whatever you whatever your game calls for. Alright. Uh, the target will be global. We're gonna set three global at least three global variables. There's gonna be more in the future. I'll, I'll probably do. there's gonna be more in the future. We'll go over that when we when we go over it, but uh for right now, battle experience. So save, battle summary, statistic value by formula name, experience, whatever it's called, to target battle experience. Okay, next one. 
same thing basically battle summary but you're using money so you save the battle summary money to battle money okay that one's easy then one more variable battle summary hero summary count you want to save that to something called like battle summary or battle summary count if you if you want the names of these global variables are really any variables whenever you're naming variables you can name them whatever you want it's just uh the name doesn't matter but it the location of where you're saving them that's that's what's important as long as you know what your system is right so this will be this will be enough to show us you gained so much experience, you gained so much money, okay? And then we are going to open the overlay, the victory aftermath overlay. You can choose by destination or you can just pick it here. Um, and then I have it set up to display static message. And it just says gained global variable 50 experience. So global variable 50 was my battle experience. So I gained however much experience. I used the victory message template. I didn't offset it because I want it to appear underneath the victory aftermath overlay. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> hmm, excuse me. Okay. And then after that, same thing with money, okay? Gained, global variable, 51, money. Whatever the money you specify to the monster, or the enemy, that's how much you'll gain. I, again, I used victory message as the template. I didn't offset it because I want it to appear at the bottom. You can put in these little, uh, what would you call them, like short codes or, or whatever. You can put in these little commands, so it'll, it'll sh display this for a second, and then it'll continue automatically. I'm actually going to take these off. Um, I was just messing around with them. But if you want it to cycle through these messages automatically, then you can you can do that. But I'm going to um, do that, and I think I can I think I can leave that on. I don't know. I don't remember. I should have tried that ahead of time. And then after all that, it ends the battle and returns to prior scene. So this is all pretty much good to go. And I'll show you real quick too over in enemies. Go to Google Gobble. I went ahead and added on him, we have in the bottom right corner, we have battle rewards. So I set up my condition as always. You can you can define certain conditions. Uh, so you can, you know, random rewards. Um, you can have a certain reward if you have a variable or a switch, a switch set to a certain value or a variable re reaches a certain number. So it's like if you have some special quests where you'd have to defeat 50, uh, goblins or whatever um, and then you get this special goblin sword you could track it in there something like that and then below the conditions you set up the reward so I just set it uh, 50 or statistic experience uh, you can set it to be random or you can set a certain amount so I just set it for a hundred experience same thing with money is random or a certain amount there you go uh, you can set other things like equipment, you can set the variables and switches like I was saying, so it's like if you wanted to track a certain type of enemy kill, you could track it in a variable, or a switch, or whatever. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? And you could set more than one, I believe. Uh, da -da -da -da, more than one condition, yeah. Right? Oh, it's set another, there we go. You could set another battle condition if you want one to be random and one to be set you know what I mean so if you have a random drop you could set this to always and then randomly drop uh, a strong weapon right okay I don't have any weapons built in yet I still got to cover that but that's that I think that's everything I wanted to go over before showing you everything in action so let's fire it up we're gonna show off First, I'll show off the escape command. Bloop. We drop in because we were on a layer higher than the ground layer. Still gotta fix that. Uh, let's check out the escape scale first. Is the eternal endless scream. Let's just do escape, 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 and 
escape. Party fled, we heard the sound effect, and we return to the map. Very cool. And now before I jump in, we're gonna take a look at our uh, levels and our experience. So we are at level five, experience 232, level four, 165. Gorlock is at level two at uh, one, or excuse me, at 50, it should be 150 afterwards. Uh, and Ms. Guppy is just sitting here at a pretty th level 36, 9,999. So we're not going to see much change with her. But the other three, we will probably, we'll definitely see a level up with Gorlock. Uh, and we might see one with the two of them. Um, but we'll see 332, 265, and 150. So let's try it out. I almost closed the window. I have a bad habit of doing that. All right. Let's try out our skills. We can go in, smack talk, we can select it, and we can select the enemy. Ha oh, ha, success. We're gonna use fire. This one should probably act first because I think Miss Guppy, or uh, uh, Gab is faster than uh, the others. So we're gonna use fire, and it's gonna do 150. Attack, uh, and then another smack talk, why not? And then we're gonna set one to heal because why not? 150. Enemies defeated. Then we get gained 100 experience. Gained 55 money. Everything looks nice and clean here. We still got that up in the corner, but you know, that's whatever. And that's. That's. That's fine. So then we exit. We're back here. Check it out. Level 3, 150, level 5, yep, so they did get a level up. Level 6, 332, level 5, 265, level 3, 150. Bam, look at that. That is pretty nice. Oh, and we got 55 money, so everything is working good. Uh, I didn't go into, you know, if you get level ups, having it display Bertimus leveled up, Gorlock leveled up, you know, I, I didn't put that in yet. That seemed like it was going to be, it'll be a bit more of a process. It's not really overly complicated it's kind of similar to displaying the uh, money and experience there are a few more steps to it though so I figured for this video we could keep it a little bit shorter um, just show you know go over the things I messed up last time uh, and then just you know show how we get that a uh, victory screen but let me know in the comments if you would like to see uh, on the next video if you'd like to see me uh, set up the victory level up display. If you'd like to see, uh, you know, so and so leveled up, gained this many stats, gained HP up, gained uh, strength up. If you want to see that in the next video, please leave a comment and let me know, and I will work on that next. If, however, you are ready for me to move on from battle stuff and start showing more things like. Uh, um, creating inventories or uh, shops or you know just just other things other aspects let me know too i want to know what tutorials you guys want next it help it does it helps me just plan content out for you okay all right i think that should do it for today's video thank you so much for watching please remember to do all the youtube things all the standard things uh, and if you don't have a copy of RPG Architect yet, be sure to grab it on Steam. We are still in early access, uh, but as you can see, it's pretty awesome. I'm going to leave a video up on screen for you guys to check out in case you needed more user interface tutorial stuff. But in the meantime, you have been awesome, I have been Bert, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Master.